we're gonna shift into the workshop for a second. I've got several questions here that I think are great. I'd love to share. Um, the first one is from Dennis from the Black Market Outpost. Thank you, my friend. And he asks, what is the one tool in your shop that is the biggest struggle to use effectively every time I go to it? Probably without question, it revolves around painting and probably specifically the airbrush. I love the airbrush. I love what it can do. And I love even more what it can do beyond my skill set. I'm currently working on our pit project, right? Which is this scaled down world building that we're going to be doing. And I'm working on this first major piece. So in doing this, I'm pulling out the airbrush and I'm using it on a small scale. I've used the airbrush for bigger projects and that allows a lot more room for uh, the lack of finesse I have. But I'm always intimidated by it. It can be a complicated thing to work with from a standpoint of if you're mixing the paint and making sure that it's the right consistency, that your airbrush is clean and, and dialed in so that it works right, but also understanding the different types of airbrushes and the finite control that you can get with it. I'm not afraid to use it, but it's definitely a struggle. And it's one of those tools that I don't care how much I struggle with it, I'm going to keep going after it because the results that it can give you and the way it can help a project, it's, it's worth it. So I'm happy to experiment with it, but it definitely is a struggle. <laughs> I won't even go into the tools here that I haven't even touched yet. We'll do that later. Uh, G Cubed Productions asks, how many hours a week do we spend in the shop? Uh, you do a great job of having diverse projects. How far in advance do you plan out the projects and videos or do you take it week by week? Man, um, my wife and I have no children. So after the day job is over, I go into full on smuggler's room mode. So that means pretty much every weekend I'm in the shop um, until she tells me you need to get out of the shop for a few minutes. Uh, and I spend as much time during the week in the evenings as I can. I don't really know that there's a set amount of hours. I think it's more of what hours are available within that given week. I do travel a fair amount for my job, so that does pull me away. So when I am home and I have a moment, I'm out in the shop working as much as I can. It's not as much as I'd like. There'd be a lot more content if there were more time. Obviously, that's probably true for everybody. And hey, if you want to help us with that, Patreon is a great way to support us. <laughs> Selfish plug, sorry. Um, yeah, so I, that's, as far as time, I spend whatever time I can. The projects, we do a lot of planning. And I should say that my wife does a ton of planning. And then my strategy is to disrupt that plan as often as possible with all the random stuff that I want to do or a project that starts on Monday and by Friday I'm on a different project. It can get a little haphazard. She's done a better job of keeping me in line. Uh, I think that's more because if I don't focus, we can't get content out and we don't have the opportunity to share as much as we'd like. Uh, I do a fair amount of planning in Notion. That's a, a software tool if you're not familiar, where I lay out research. Um, if I can do Adobe Illustrator or Fusion 360 to, to plan how certain things are gonna look, I'll do that. Some projects are more organic and there's nothing I can do about that. But at least I know what it is I'm trying to do. Otherwise, I don't have the material to do it. And with time being precious, I have to have the material in order to start the project. Um, and in some cases, there is a week by week. If a project that's started out as a couple of days worth of build turns into a couple of weeks, then we have to shift, which means that those weeks can alter and we try to find another project to put it in its place. This year, that's something we're trying to figure out. I don't want to just constantly put up a simple project or a filler just so we have content and acquire views. I'm not really interested in that anymore. I would much rather 
take a project that was really big and an element of that project took a lot of thought and creativity to add and make that a video that provides you with value on how we came up with this certain thing to solve a problem or shop infrastructure. I love shop infrastructure and our shop right now is scary to look at. It's kind of terrifying in here. There are things we need to build to make us more efficient as we work in the shop. There's no reason not to share that with you guys. As a matter of fact, I kind of like the idea of transforming this shop even more into another room build. I love the aesthetic. If I'm gonna be out here building, I should be surrounded by it. So as far as workshop is going, I can't wait to show you that. I hope that answered the question. I tend to ramble. And then to round us out on the workshop topic, uh, Walter Dobbins asks, I would love to see a video where you introduce us to different tools like the laser cutter, the 3D printers, table saw, and such. I would love to do that too. Um, years ago, we had a Geekication series that I don't think I ever gave quite enough attention to where we could take a, a specific tool and share what knowledge we have about it on one hand or a tool that we have no knowledge of or little and learn so that you can learn in the same fashion, right? You know, maybe we, we learn and show all the pitfalls and mistakes so that you don't have to make those. I, I love tools, obviously. And I love the journey of using them and, and understanding the best way to use them or ways to use them that no one else has thought of that helps deliver a great solution. And I think that we live in, I mean, when you think about the world we live in right now with laser cutters, 3D printers, and all of the different machines that can help us achieve something faster, we get a fair amount of flack for using the laser cutter. I get it. It's an expensive machine. It's not something everybody else can go out and just buy. Totally understand that. However, I do realize that I'm very efficient with it and it becomes a go-to because it's fast and efficient. And for me, it's, it's about the project, not the tool necessarily. What tool can I use to help achieve the result I'm after in the least amount of time? And that's not lazy. And it's not that I don't want to be a craftsman and use, you know, wood hand tools to carve specific things. There are projects that are designed for that, that you should use more of a hand tool or whatnot. But I also think that all of these other rapid prototyping and manufacturing tools allow us to be able to, to achieve what it is we're after. That's kind of my opinion on it. To come back to the question, we have a lot of plans this year to, to take you through those tool processes. Like I said earlier, the, the, the channel is going to evolve. And I think part of that is projects and room builds and tools and materials and you name it. It's kind of all on the table. If you want to see it and you have interest, you tell us and we'll do it.